to crumble and shake your consistent reputation is what holds me in place so today I'll tell the whole world you are solid my solid Solid, yeah, yeah, my solid rock. You are solid, my solid rock. Solid, yeah, yeah. I can lean on you when I can cry to you when you won't move. I can trust you cause you're my solid, my solid rock. You are solid, yeah, yeah, by solid rock. I can lean on you when you won't move. I can cry to you when you won't move. I can trust you. Cause you're my solid, yeah, yeah, by solid rock. You are solid, yeah, yeah, by solid rock. You are solid, my Solid you are solid, yeah, yeah, by solid rock. I can lean on you when you won't move. I can cry to you when you won't move. I can trust you Cause you're my solid Yeah, yeah My solid rock You are solid Yeah, yeah My solid rock You are Solid, yeah, yeah, my solid rock. Psalm 149. We're going to be moving a little different here tonight. Praise ye the Lord. In other words, you praise God. You praise God. That's what he's saying. And the... Um, the way you're going to praise God is by, obviously, is by opening your mouth. 
He says, sing unto the Lord a new song. He says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Where is this new song coming from? If you're in, in your spirit. So you hear something in your spirit and you just begin to sing it. Might be a line, might be two lines, or whatever it is. Might be a word, might be whatever it is. You hear this melody or you hear this song in your spirit and you begin to sing it. That's a new song. That's a song that God is putting in your spirit for your victory and your deliverance or, or for somebody else's victory or somebody else's deliverance. You've got to sing it. I want you to see how everything here is dealing with the mouth. And his praise in the congregation of the saints. Are we in the congregation of the saints? Are we in the congregation of the saints? Yes, amen. He says, so it's, you sing the new song, open your mouth, and praise the Lord in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. So you're using a musical instrument, but you're also singing. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. So you, if you want to make Father happy, pray, start worshiping, start praising, start singing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. This, well, this is one scripture I have yet to, um, glory be to God, to fulfill. Singing aloud on my bed. I, just, I will sing quietly. He says, sing aloud upon your beds. You know, you, are you noticing a certain kind of attitude here? You notice, you notice a certain sort of attitude that he's calling for here? Now you can be quiet and passive. No, no, no. Let me tell you all something. Let me tell you all something. I'm going to tell you all. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very, 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 very carefully. Listen very carefully. Your spirit, right? Let me ask you a question. Who is your spirit like? Mariana, what do you say? That's correct, girl. Because the Bible tells us in Corinthians that oh, we, are one, we are the same spirit with the Lord. We are one spirit with the Lord. And all of what you see going on here, all of what you see going on here, this goes on in heaven. This goes on in heaven. And so your spirit man is like this, but you... Your soul has to release that. Your soul has to release that. And God is not coming here and forcing anybody to do that. You have to make that choice to release that spirit man. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the high praises of God be in there. Verse 6, we are in verse 6. Let the high praises of God be. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I bless your wonderful name. I bless your wonderful name. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword... What is the sword in the spirit? What is the sword? The word of God is the sword of the spirit. How do you wield a sword? In the natural, how do you wield a sword in the natural? You use your hands. The hand in the spirit is your mouth. You take 
the word of God in your mouth and you speak it and you declare it. Why? Why do we praise the Lord? Why do we sing a new song? Why do we um, take the, the, the two-edged sword in our hands? Why do we do all these things? He's telling us now in verse 7. He's telling us why. To execute vengeance on the heathen. Be coming, be coming, be coming. To execute vengeance on the heathen. See, this is why we're having problems in the earth today. Because Christians are not worshipping and praising the way they're supposed to. Now, um, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me back up a little bit because I know that that's not the only reason, okay? I know that that's not the only reason. But when the people of God are operating the way they're supposed to operate, society changes. Hear what the scripture says. When you worship, you sing the songs of Zion. He says you are executing vengeance on the heathen. There are some people in society that think that they are above the law. That they can do things and get away with it because they're very wealthy or they're very influential. Well, let me tell you something. God can reach anyone. And when the people of God begin to worship in spirit and in truth, God begins to execute vengeance on the heathen. Well, uh, you have to believe the word of the Lord, right? And punishments on the people. Are you seeing that there? Are you seeing that there, brethren? Father. Verse 8. 2. He begins to tell us again why to praise the Lord. To bind their kings with chains. Both natural and spiritual. Bind them with chains. You will bind them with chains when you begin to sing the songs of Zion and worship God and praise Him the way He deserves to be praised. And they are nobles with fetters of iron. Chaining them up. Chain them up. I know that this is more than just natural. Because the Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our battle is a spiritual battle. Mankind, mankind is either under one or two places they get their inspiration from. And it's each of us. Either we are being inspired by the Spirit of God or the Word of God, or we are not being inspired by the Spirit of God, but we are being inspired by some other kind of spirit, which is the devil. You only have two kinds. Either you are being inspired by God's Spirit, or you are not being inspired by God's Spirit. And so we have to do our fighting in the Spirit before you can see things manifest in the natural properly. Execute upon them the judgment written. This honor has all the... All what? All his say, he said, this honor, this, this right, this is your honor. This is your right to execute judgment on these people. And because, because the church has not been doing what it was supposed to be doing in this regard, that is why people get in away with stuff. I know a bunch of people want to, a bunch of people want to go and march. Well, go and march now. Go, go march. When you should have been executing the judgment of God. Is it wrong to protest? No. You can protest. People can protest peacefully. There is nothing wrong with that. Is it wrong to raise your voice for injustice? No. There is nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when the church does not be the church, 
then the unnatural man have to do what he has to do, the best that he knows to do. They're just doing the best that they know to do. But we need to do the best that we need to know to, we, know, we need to do. And, and it starts, it starts with us right now beginning to learn how to praise God and not be quiet when it's time to worship and not be quiet when it's time to sing the songs of Zion because when you sing the songs of Zion, this is what you're doing. The Bible says he surrounds us with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He surrounds us with songs of deliverance. Glory be to God. There is a song in your spirit. Let it come out. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. In chapter 4, he started talking about the coming of the Lord. In chapter 4, he's talking about the coming of the Lord. And now he's continuing this talk in chapter 5. Glory be to God. He says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Are you seeing this here, brethren? What does that mean? What? We know, we know he's going to write. We don't know, one, we don't know when he's coming, but Juju has the, the correct thing. He's going to come what? Unexpected. Don't know exactly when he's coming, but when he comes, a lot of people are going to not expect his coming at this time. As a thief in the night. Glory be to God. For when they shall say, watch verse 3, watch verse 3, watch it please. For when they shall say what? Peace and safety. When the world believes that they have peace and safety. So this indicates to me that there is going to come a period of time on this earth when they will believe that they are in peace and they are in safety. And a lot of the issues that we have facing us right now, they would believe that they have overcome these issues and they have relative peace and safety. Now, what does the Bible say? When they shall say peace and safety, what's going to happen? Then sudden destruction comes upon them. Are you seeing the bread? Are you reading the scriptures here, brethren? Are you reading these scriptures? Okay. So, listen. This is why I keep telling you. This is why I keep saying. Do not look for a better life on this earth. That new creation, man. That's what we strive for. So we can overcome the, 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 this horrible earth. And when we see Jesus, we can uh, make it into the kingdom with him. And he goes on to say, he goes on to say, he go then sudden destruction come upon them. Watch us this. As travail upon a woman with child. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I didn't even think that one was, I didn't realize that one was there. And Pharaoh going to come and testify about that. Hallelujah. As travail upon a woman with trial, and they shall not escape. Who is this day not going to escape? Who are, who, who are the day that will not escape? The wicked in the world, the those that have not submitted their lives to Christ, they will not escape. The only way to escape is to be in Christ. Glory be to God. But I love this part here, verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Claudia, um, could you get a, a song of worship, please? That that day, he said, you are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
Isn't that good news for believers? Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Hallelujah. Uh, he's going to come unexpected. He's going to come at a time when they don't think he's going to come. But it's going to affect the unbelievers. But the believers, the saints of God, that day will not overtake them as a thief. Because the people of God will be ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And the way to be ready, brethren, is don't focus upon what's happening upon the earth right now. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on this word. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 